Thank you so much for joining us for another episode of Confluence Day today. I am Victoria Oniaye. This week on the program, we spotlight the plans of Governor Usman Ahmed Ododo's administration for the Youth and Sports Ministry in Kogi State, the Commissioner for Youth and Sports Development, Honorable Monday Anyebe, and the Special Advisor on Youth and Student Affairs, Oladele John Nihi, will be our guide. The plan for youth empowerment and vocational development gets more attention from Kogi State Government as we look at another GYB legacy that gave birth to the Nigeria Career Friendship Institute. Plus, Okon groups in Kogi West Senatorial District pledge support to Governor Usman Ahmed Ododo. They say APC is truly progressive as they pass vote of confidence on the governor and his predecessor, Alhaji Yahya Bello. We have details of these and more in a moment. We begin the first segment of the program with a focus on the plans and agenda of the Kogi State Government under the leadership of Governor Usman Ahmed Ododo, especially at a time when the people are eagerly waiting to experience the continuity that the Governor promised them. The State Commissioner for Youths and Sports Development, Honorable Monde Anyebe, and Special Advisor on Youth and Student Affairs, Oladele John Nihi, say Kogites should be expecting a whole lot of transformative ideas from Governor Ododo's government. Investing in youth development isn't just a moral imperative. It's an economic necessity, a path the Kogi State Government, under the ruling All Progressives Congress, APC, has deemed essential for crafting a better and more prosperous future. So, when Governor Usman Ahmed Ododo assumed office, he spared no words in assuring the people that his government would be steadfast in improving their welfare and well-being. He specifically pledged to invest massively in critical sectors of the state's economy, ensuring active engagement of the youth population and affording them the opportunity to contribute to the state's economic development. The leadership will be more inventive our workers will be more productive across sectors and the productive capacity will remain undiminished under the new administration. Our youth will find more avenues to build skills for innovation and creative enterprises, particularly. With this commitment, it became clear that the people of Kogi State could anticipate better days ahead judging by the governor's dedication to building upon and advancing the progress initiated by his predecessor. <music> governor Usman Ahmed Ododo understands that the true wealth of a nation does not just lie in its natural resources, but also the development of its youth by fostering their personal growth, resilience and sense of belonging. The Kogi State Commissioner for Youth and Sports, Monde Ayebe, gives us an insight into the lofty ideas and plans of Governor Ododo's government. Alhaji Ahmed Usman Ododo is to consolidate on the youth inclusiveness that has always been the watchword of the government of APC here in Kogi State. We're going to encourage and build the youth to key into the policies of this government and ensure that sports is taking, it becomes an integral part of them such that 
they will all be meaningful, meaningfully engaged and it will become a source of livelihood for them. The Confluence State Stadium on Zone H Road, Lokoja, remains a priority for the Ododo administration. The Sports Commissioner says the facility remains actively utilized by both male and female football teams. In the last visit to His Excellency, he assured us that there are going to be many more sports facilities coming on board. These are part of the plans we have to hit the ground running. And I'm sure that when we have these facilities in place, people can utilize them. The youth can utilize them. The youth can be transformed through them. And I can assure you that these things are coming on board anytime soon. And under this very present administration of His Excellency Alaji Ahmed Usman Ododo, the government is going to hit the ground running, also build on works of the, gov of the immediate past governor in transforming sports from where it is now to the next level. I want to tell you that our government will promote sports across board and make it highly competitive. Apart from the commissioner, who is highly optimistic about the impact of the strategies on the youth population, the athletes are also looking forward to the activation of these brilliant initiatives and ideas that would propel them to do more. I think the government has been active because one of the key points for the past administration is how to promote gender equality. And I want to say the girls have been enjoying that privilege. Beyond football, youth empowerment and the activities of Kogi State students are also focal points for the Ododo administration. Spearheading this effort in collaboration with the State Commissioner is Oladele John Nihi, the Special Advisor to Governor Ododo on Youth and Student Affairs. He shares insights into the state government's plans to harness the energy, creativity and innovation of young people for social development. What we are trying to do now in Kogi State is seeing a situation whereby, uh, starting from even the tertiary institutions, more attention are paid to entrepreneurial by means of engagement of young people in various capacity building, various skills, uh, acquisition and, uh, and training. So as we go ahead in, in the government, looking at the plan, the blueprint of His Excellency Elijah Medus well, the, the youth constituency can, can, can go to sleep that they have a governor that is prepared, a governor who is aware of their pain, who is aware of their challenges and is very much ready to tackle them. Entrepreneurial youth engagement, uh, capacity building and uh, reduction in unemployment rates in Kogi State is is more of priority to me, and uh, and that also uh, aligns perfectly with uh, the campaign uh, uh, policies of uh, His Excellency Elijah Ahmed Usman Udo in aspect of youth and. Uh, students. While the government strives to enhance the quality of life for everyone, the youth remain optimistic about better days ahead, pledging unwavering support for the state government's endeavors. Um, I'm actually a, a, a blessed person then due to the situation of the government, the past administration, so I want to commend the government for everything. For me to have benefited in this aspect, I I don't want it to stop in my era. Even when I leave, I want other students to be able to come out and say, oh, we've gained a lot of things and uh, we've, been a, we've been blessings to other people. What you have done for the Youth Council that make the council to be proud of is making the whole 21 local government, uh, council member, the automatic secretary of the local government. This is what no government have ever done in the history of uh, Kogi State. Undoubtedly, Governor Ododo prioritizes investing in youth development to build a brighter future for Kogi State. He asserts that he will persist until he empowers them to become tomorrow's leaders and shape a brighter present.
Moving on to other stories, the Nigeria-Korea Friendship Institute is a brainchild of the Yahya Bello government. Today, the institute is rated as a top-class level technical and vocational institute in Nigeria, providing industry-specific and employable skills to youths in the state and Nigerians as a whole. Governor Usman Ododo's government is building on this legacy as he's given the institute the necessary backing to fly. Our crew visits the institute, which is reshaping the lives and building a strong future for the state. In a nation grappling with the scourge of unemployment, one institute stands out as a beacon of hope offering a pathway to gainful employment and economic prosperity. Welcome to the Nigeria-Korea Friendship Institute of Vocation and Advanced Technology, where dreams are forged and futures are transformed. The institute is a brainchild of former governor Yahya Adouza Bello, and over the years it has grown by leaps and bounds. The state government had realized the need for practical skills and industry-specific training to address the growing demand for technically skilled professionals in Nigeria's workforce. Building on this legacy, Governor Usman Ahmed Odudu is committed to consolidating and expanding the institute's impact and that's because his administration recognizes the pivotal role vocational education plays in empowering youth and driving economic growth. Our school will be filled and our teachers will have more reason to smile on their way to the classroom. Our youth will find more avenue to build skills for innovation and creative enterprises on the back of the solid foundation laid by the administration of my predecessor as we further open up our state to investors willing to collaborate with us under a robust public-private partnership framework. At the Nigeria-Korea Friendship Institute, the mission is clear, to equip students with practical skills and industry-relevant knowledge that will enhance their employability and contribute to Nigeria's economic development. With a diverse range of short-term and long-term courses, including electrical electronics, welding and fabrication, and information technology, the plan by the Kogi State Government is to allow NKFI offer students a comprehensive education tailored to meet the demands of the job market. The previous administration under the leadership of uh, al Haji Abilu did tremendously well for this uh, great institution and we've been able to achieve a lot. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, the previous government fast-tracked a lot of things for us in attaining our aims and objectives. Um, like um, fulfilling its own part of the uh, partnership deal, um, supplying staff, you know, if you have an institution, you must have staff, qualified staff, the state government provided the staff, uh, they, 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 they uh, provided the tertiary institution, they placed them on tertiary institution um, on salary scale, which is one of the major requirements for you to pass accreditation. So um, that alone propelled um, our drive to move at a very jet speed in achieving um, the aims and objectives of this great institution. The Kogi State Government's commitment to excellence is evident in the quality of internationally exposed lecturers and state-of-the-art facilities at the Institute. With access to cutting-edge learning tools and industry partnerships, students receive a world-class education that prepares them for success in the global marketplace. The 
before I came here, I did extensive research online looking for an institute that would provide me with the knowledge I was seeking. When I came here, I must say I wasn't disappointed because I came to meet um, equipment that I had only seen online. So I would say my, my stay here has been quite fulfilling and enriching. We have our best equipment, like we have all equipment we have. And after a theory uh, teachings, we do have practical classes. And to me, it's the fast way like to get all information we need. NKFI's innovative spirit extends beyond the classroom with groundbreaking inventions like the PC trainer technology, revolutionizing computer hardware training and garnering international acclaim. The partnership with the South Korean government. So we were lucky that the institute is attached in Kogi State. And this is the only state that uh, we have that type of institute in Nigeria. And this uh, actually uh, involved in issue of uh, technical and uh, uh, advanced courses that students will embark upon. So by the completion of two years, uh, the students have been given NID, that is National Innovative Diploma. It can be on their own. As NKFI continues to make strides in vocational education, the Kogi State Government remains committed to its vision of reducing youth unemployment and empowering the next generation of Nigerian professionals. From the halls of learning to the corridors of opportunity, it is clear that the Kogi State Government is shaping a brighter future for Nigeria, one student at a time. Just before we go, let's tell you that the unity of Kogi State has never been in doubt, even when some naysayers tried to polarize the state along tribal lines. The state government over the last eight years maintained a firm position that never again will anyone cause division amongst his people. Governor Usman Ahmed Ododo is still maintaining that position and he says he will work in the interest of everyone without bias. Now a group of Okun residents from Kogi West Senatorial District is pledging its support for Governor Ododo and have decided to pass a vote of confidence on him, Al-Haji Ayabello and the APC. Elections are over, and now the business of governance is taking its full swing at all levels in Kogi State. The sentient voices are also finding their level. For them, it is to either associate with the winning team or wait till they get another chance at the poll. But one phrase that has always played out in Kogi State, right from the days of the former governor Yahaya Bilu, is that the unity of Kogi State cannot and will not be compromised. Governor Usman Ududu is also riding on this great legacy and speaking confidently on ensuring that there is peace and unity in Kogi State and the people are gradually seeing the impact. Fellow co-guides, I promise you all, I will not be an ethnic governor. I will be the governor of Kogi State. Be assured that we shall deliver on our promises of a united, secure, progressive, and prosperous Kogi State. Under my leadership, I want to restate 
that Kogi State shall be one of the sub-national hubs of pilot projects for key drivers of the federal government's programs in food security, poverty eradication, job creation, access to capital, inclusion, rule of law, the fight against corruption, and overall economic growth. The Oku people in the West, the Ibira in the Central, and the Gala from the East have all lived together peacefully despite their language and political differences. Yet some dissenting voices are still sowing seeds of discord, but not without stiff resistance. Eniola Olayemi is the coordinator of the Okun United for Justice, a grassroots group in Lokoja, the Kogi state capital. Just like several others, the Okun United for Justice is pledging allegiance to Governor Usman Ahmed Odudu, former Governor Yahaya Bilu, and the ruling All Progressives Congress in the state. We, the people of Okunland, are solidly behind the administration of His Excellency Alhaji Ahmed Usman Odudu. We are big stakeholders, having delivered over 90% of our votes to him. The APC lost only in Yagba is marginally to Edaleke Abejide. All the other Okun local government areas delivered to APC massively, including the local government of Senator Dino Melaye. Okun is not known for ethnic sentiments. Our judgment is based on who will deliver good governance. The government of APC showed beyond doubt that Okun is, an, is at the center of its plans and our results showed clearly where we belong. We make it categorically clear that the election of November 11, 2023 in Kogi State was free, fair, and credible. No incident was recorded in Kogi West and Kogi Central during the election. It is therefore unfortunate that surrogates of the Abuja-based Kogi politicians are gathering from their dust of defeat to throw tantrums on the intelligence of the Okun nation. The commitment is beyond political. The group acknowledges the contributions of Okun people to the victory of the APC in Kogi State and the numerous developmental strides the senatorial district has enjoyed since the APC took over leadership in the state. Construction of GYB Modest Secondary School at Okebukun, establishment of a rice mill at Ejiba, building and equipping of an ultra-modern GYB model hospital in Nisalu, as well as remodeling of GDSS Takete Ide, among others, are enough to remain grateful to the administration of His Excellency Alhaji Yaya Bilo, CON, forever. We hereby pass a vote of confidence on the Governor Alhaji Usman Ahmed Ododo, the former Governor Alhaji Yaya Bilo, CON, Governor Ahmed Usman Ododo, and the leadership of the APC in Kogi State. While naysayers propagate falsehoods, those who have experienced the dividends of good governance and equitable resource allocation commend the state government for its commendable performance. The past administration did well in Okunland in terms of development, like the, like you said, the establishment of Kogi State University the township roads and you know the university alone will create more employment for for our people oku people fully supported uh, alaji usman ahmed usman ududu coupled with the yaya Bilu that was to hand, hand over to him that time all he has done in the state all this made the Okun people to follow, uh, specifically Kaba Township has uh, taken a new shape in terms of uh, road infrastructure. If you notice, uh, for decades, the road is characterized with bombs and uh, dilapidated uh, state. The institutionalization of a university in Kaba 
that has really, really boosted a lot of economic activities in Okunland as a whole. And it gives a lot of job opportunity for our people. And even those that have been working at a higher level as professor outside the state have seen the reason to come back home and contribute to the development of the state. In all, Governor Usman Ahmed Ododo's vision for a united and progressive Kogi state continues to inspire hope and confidence, offering reassurance of a brighter tomorrow. And that's the show today, everyone. Thank you so much for spending your time with us. And we hope you enjoyed every moment you spent with us. Join us next time for another interesting package. Until then, I am Victoria Oniaye, wishing you a pleasant evening.